Bhagavate Vas. Janmad Yasya Yato Nivayad Itaratas Chartesu Avigya Swarat. Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Vuyantiyat Surayaha Tejo Varimadam Yata Vinimayo Yatra Trisargo Mesha Damna Svena Sada Nirasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Dimahi O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu Shivadam tapa trayon mulinam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyohide Avurudyate Tra. Krite Bihi Sususabish Takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are full and pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatarur galitam phalam sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam Hibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Mahur Aho Raska Bhavakaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice is already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. 
Punya Shavana Kirtana Hedyan Taksto Hyabhadrani Vidunati Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. <clears throat> and for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta presu bhadresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava kamalo badayas chaye chaita etara navidam stitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat tattva vijnanam Bhutta sangasya jayate When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis siddhyante sabhasam saya siyante chasyakarmani drista evat manishwari Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection And enables one to come at once to the uh, to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Fifteen, Verse Number Forty. Visrijya tatratat sarvam. Dukula Valayadikam Nirmamo Nirahankara Sanchinna Seya Sanchinna Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj Yudhisthira at once relinquished all his garments belt and ornaments of the royal order and became completely disinterested and unattached to everything. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. To become purified of material contamination is the necessary qualification for becoming one of the associates of the Lord. No one can become an associate of the Lord or can go back to Godhead without such purification. Maharaj Yudhisthira, therefore, to become spiritually pure, at once gave up his royal opulence, relinquishing his royal dress and garments. The kashaya, or saffron loincloth of a sannyasi, indicates freedom from all attractive material garments. And thus, he changed his dress accordingly. He became disinterested in his kingdom and family and thus became free from all material contaminations or material designation. P. 
people who are generally attached to various kinds of designations, the designations of family, society, country, occupation, wealth, position, and many others. As long as one is attached to such designations, he is considered materially impure. The so-called leaders of men in the modern age are attached to national consciousness, but they do not know that such false consciousness is also another designation of the materially conditioned soul. One has to relinquish such designations before one can become eligible to go back to Godhead. Foolish people adore such men who die in national consciousness. But here is an example of Maharaja Yudhisthira, a royal king who prepared himself to leave the world without such national consciousness. And yet he is remembered even today because he was a great pious king, almost on the same level with the personality of Godhead, Sri Rama. And because people of the world were dominated by such pious kings, they were happy in all respects. And it was quite possible for such great emperors to rule the world. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So again, Prabhupada explains in one of his letters that GBC means everybody is happy in the temple. So how do you make someone happy? In Kali Yuga, it's not easy. <laughs> People have so many material desires. Uh, they're not very easily really happy. They go from one desire to the next, and it's unending. But in the, uh, the what we discussed yesterday, uh, well, I discussed it in, in the uh, eulogy of uh, Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. If we change our desires from desiring material things for our own personal satisfaction to desiring to please Krishna in a thousands and millions of different ways, like distributing his books or worshiping the deity or cooking for the deity or cleaning the temple for the deity or uh, offering money to the deity, all these different ways, glorifying the deity with choice poetry, uh, Vedic uh, verses and so forth written by pure devotees. If we change our desire from desiring for ourselves the desiring for Krishna, then there's no limit to how much such desires will be satisfied by Krishna. But if we desire things for ourselves, we cannot get more, no matter what we do, no matter how many parikramas, how many uh, Bhakti Shastri uh, degrees or Bhakti Vedanta degrees, no matter how many pujas we perform, we will not get more than what we deserve due to our karma and that's very limited and there'll be some good things and some bad things but nothing more you it won't you won't get one thing more or one thing less by doing all those other things that's explained in the first chapter of bhagavad gita verse 32 to 35 so therefore changing the quality of our desires not not like the maya body eliminating all desires that's imperfect uh, vairagya or renunciation but changing the quality of our desires from desiring for ourselves in different ways uh, for sense gratification in this way that way and becoming free of all false designations these are called upadis false designations identifying self with the body and the extension of the body in the form of family in the form of ethnicity in the form of nation or in the form of universal uh, so-called uh, humanity or whatever all those things are designations they're false they have nothing to do with our soul or our relationship of our eternal soul with krishna so here we see a practical example in maharaj Pariksit, who is not an old man uh, he, he's still relatively young but he has decided, I'm going to give up all these material things and prepare myself for death. And that preparation has to be a very sincere and serious decision that we make. And 
uh, it doesn't matter how old you are. If you're 20 years old and you're only going to live two more years, you're an old, old man already or old woman. And if you're 80 years old, you're going to live another 30 years, you're still young. You see? So we don't know how long we're going to live. So we should assume that we could die at any minute. And therefore, we should always be prepared. Uh, it could be an accident, it could be a, an earthquake, whatever. Uh, it's very easy to die in this material world. <laughs> That's why in the Bible, one of the uh, commandments is, Thou shalt not kill. That means that people were killing each other a lot 2,000 years ago. And if you go to the Holy Land today, uh, in other words, you go to what's called Israel or Palestine. People are still killing each other. And they're killing each other all over the world. So this killing has not stopped. Uh, and therefore, we live in dangerous times. And there are many dangerous people. Uh, <clears throat> I was recently reading a, a biography, an autobiography by a, devo by a young uh, by, by a devotee who was in the uh, uh, Mayapur Gurukul. That's one of the worst things I ever read in my life. What happened to that poor kid, right? I don't, I'm not going to explain it. it, it it's horrifying. And, and this is something that happened in our movement. And, and it's happening all over the world. So uh, many people's lives are ruined when they're still children. And then they have to live with that horror the rest of their life. Now, I, I did once meet a, uh, a Guru Kool uh, alumni who was seriously uh, mistreated in the Guru Kool. But he was a very enlightened person. And I met him when he was 28. And he had no uh, frustration or anger or resentment. He had forgiven everyone that mistreated him in very bad, very, very bad ways. You can't even talk about it in the temple. And he had become a, uh, he had gone to school and become a social worker, and he was helping other people who had been, uh, you know, seriously hurt in their younger years. And he had, and he was serving, uh, he and I were up all night <clears throat> cooking for Ratiatra in, in, uh, in San Francisco. And in the middle of the night, around 2 o'clock, he started talking about his experiences. And uh, I was shocked. And, but then he explained that he, he forgave everyone that hurt him. And he had uh, uh, been able to uh, meet some of those people later on when he was grown up. And he, he explained to them that he forgave them. And he was not holding any grudge against them. This person was highly elevated devotee, very, very, uh, uh, let's say, exceptional person. So in life, we're going to be confronted with many difficult situations. We have to learn to tolerate. We have to learn to forgive. And we have to learn to go forward progressively in our spiritual life. We cannot hold on to resentment our whole lifetime. That'll hold us back from going back to Godhead. Our mind should be completely clear of all those types of thoughts, whether it's designations due to bodily identification. Just like recently, I was speaking to a person who was very, very insulted by something that happened in our movement. And they, were, they went on and on and without stopping for anything for a long time, complaining about how how is it possible that devotees who are chanting Hare Krishna for 20, 30, 40 years and they act like that and this and that and, and explaining how much they were hurt? And I said, but you were not hurt. He said, what are you talking about I'm not hurt? How do you know? Well, I said, what's hurt is not you. I said, if you have a toothache, you can point to what's hurt. You can point to the tooth that hurts. But if you go to the doctor and say, I'm, very, I'm hurting very much, I'm suffering terribly. And he said, okay, where is it? You said, well, it, it, it's somewhere in my body. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. He said, well, well, what is it? Did you have an accident? He said, no. Did someone hit you? No. Did you fall down? No. Uh, did you eat something and, and, and your stomach hurts? No. He said, what happened? Said, Somebody insulted me. Oh, 
Okay, well, where does it hurt? Well, I don't know. I mean, may, maybe it's right here. So the doctor did a, you know, MRI and an uh, ultrasound and an X-ray. He said, your heart's functioning perfectly. So, okay, then, uh, then maybe it's up here. So they did ultrasound, they did MRI, they did X-ray, and they said, your head is perfectly okay. It's, you don't have any blood clots, nothing. And so where does it hurt exactly? So I don't know. It just hurts. Ah. What is actually hurt? It's the false ego that's hurt. hurts. And it's something false. It's not something real, you see. And the whole thing is false. Your, your soul can never be hurt. It can never be withered by the wind. It can never be burned by fire. It's never born and it never dies. So the soul is never affected. But what is affected is something that's false. It's called the false ego. That's why even though we talk about eight elements, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego, but there's only seven coverings of the material universe. Which covering is missing? The false ego. Because it's something false. It's something that doesn't really exist. You see? But yet, we're willing to kill when we think that our false ego has been insulted. Right? And people kill easily. So, and Or we hold on to a grudge or a resentment our whole life. The last thing before a person dies, I hate this person, I'll never forgive them. You know, I've, I've, I've made a vow never to forgive them. But if you die with a feeling like that, you take birth again. In fact, what's very interesting, I was recently reading something Prabhupada wrote in a letter. He said that oftentimes, if you cheat someone in a business transaction, let's say, They'll take birth as your child in the next life. And they'll cause you unending misery. Can you imagine how, how horrible it is? This person that you cheated takes birth as your son or your daughter and completely turns against you at some point and makes you suffer like anything. So you see, the laws of karma are very, very strange and we shouldn't play around with it. We should become completely free of this, uh, what you call resentment, hatred, envy, lust, all these things. So here uh, in, in this verse today, Maharaj used here, he takes off his robe, royal robes and he uh, uh, becomes basically completely renounced not attached at all, and he's going to walk away. Walk away completely without any attachment. However, he's transferred all his attachment to Krishna. And that is what is necessary if we want to go back to Godhead. If we want to stay in this material world, we'll continue arguing, fighting, finding fault. Prabhupada wrote a letter to this one lady, and he told her, oh, you're complaining so much about the devotees, but uh, that's not the way you can correct, correct someone. You don't correct someone by criticizing. You correct someone by showing the right example. So he said, rather than criticize, you show the example. Okay. So what is that? Amanitvam, Adamitvam, Ahimsa Shantir Arjavam, Acharya Pasamam Socham, Staryam Atma Vinigraha. So this is very important. The first and foremost quality that we must develop is amanitvam, humility. Shinadapi suni chena tarurapi sastana mani na manadina kirtaniya sadahari. One should feel lower than the straw on the street, more tolerant than a tree who never uh, uh, protests. And uh, one should be ready to offer respect to everyone, even those persons who don't respect you. Why should we respect everyone? Because Krishna is in the heart of everyone. If you are a pujari and you recognize that Krishna is on the altar and you should uh, behave very nicely and respect the presence of the Lord, but then you mistreat other people, then you have failed as a pujari because Krishna is in, that same Krishna is in the heart of every living entity. Therefore, we should be respectful to everyone. 
And if you disrespect people, that means that you are on the lowest level of kanista adhikari. Kanista adhikaris respect the deity, but, but oftentimes they don't respect others. So they are at the bottom end of kanista and ready to go even lower because of their offenses. So we should never offend anyone. We should always be respectful. We should always speak gently and kindly. We should be a well-wisher, just like Prabhupada would sign his letters. You're ever well-wisher. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. So to be a well-wisher of, of everyone is the quality of a devotee. Therefore, it says, Amanitvan, humility. Adamitvam, free, freedom from false pride. Oh, I'm better than you. You don't know this. You don't know that. You're born in this family. I'm born in this other family. All that is nonsense. And Amanitvam, Adamitvam, Ahimsa. And you have to be peaceful. Uh, in other words, you have to be satisfied by being Krishna conscious. Not satisfied because you own this, you own that. Or this, you have this prestige or that prestige. No, you should be satisfied just on the basis of acquired knowledge and realization and Krishna consciousness. And that happens by chanting sincerely the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and associating very nicely with other devotees and maintaining a high standard of uh, following the regulative principles. And then you become satisfied in your heart. It doesn't matter what's happening in the world. You continue with your service. And no one can obstruct you from serving. You're not disturbed by anybody in, in your service because you're serving Krishna. You're not going to say, oh, I'm not going to do this anymore because this person did that. That means you're stopping your service to the deities because somebody said something the wrong way to you or someone did something that you didn't like. And, and you're going to punish Krishna for that? No. You have to tolerate. You have to be titikshava. You have to tolerate so many things. This is an imperfect world. Nothing is perfect here. Nor is there any perfect person in this world. So you have to learn to tolerate so many things, especially if you're a devotee. Look at what happened to Prahlad Bharaj. He didn't make any mistake. His only mistake was he was a devotee, and his father wanted to kill him for it. But yet, after his father was killed by Nishingadev, Prahlad and Nishingadev offered any benediction to Prahlad. And the only thing he asked for was, you please bring my father back and save him. And Lord Nishingadev smiled. He said, well, Prahlad, not only your father is saved, but 21 generations in your family are already saved because you're a pure devotee. So you, you see, uh, we should follow the example of Prahlad, even though his father and mother tried every way they could to kill him. He didn't have any anger toward them because he depended completely on Krishna. So when you, just like in America, if you have something, you get screwed. If you have nothing, you get everything for free. You see. If you, have, if you, go, if you go to a social worker and say, I don't have anything. I don't have a house. I don't have a salary. I don't have good health. They'll start giving you things for free. Okay? Rent the uh, basement. In other words, you get subsidized rent or no rent. You get uh, Medicare, Medicaid, all, all the levels of Medicare and Medicaid, which costs a lot of money. For a normal person, you get them all free. And then you get uh, food stamps for free and, and uh, traveling expenses. For free. You get everything for free if you have nothing. And if you have something, you get screwed. <laughs> you go to a hospital one time, it costs $1,000, right? And, and you have to pay. Otherwise, they pursue you, right? That's because you have something like a house or you have some salary, right? But if you have nothing at all, they give you everything for free in America. So all you have to do is leave America, walk across the border in, in the south, like in uh, New Mexico, from Mexico. You get everything for free. They even, they even give you the right to vote, even though you're not a citizen, right? And they'll pay for your education. 
right? Because you have nothing. Well, if you are a Kinshina Gochara, you completely depend on Krishna, and you have nothing material that you're proud about, you, you, you give everything to Krishna, like because he's Charastakam, he's, he's sure, he's the thief, he's stealing everything, right? But actually, uh, giving to Krishna is not stealing, just like Bali Maharaj. Krishna took everything from him. But Bali Maharaj said, wait a minute, you didn't take everything. You didn't take me, so now I'm giving myself to you. Right. So he gave everything to Krishna, and what happened? He got something that nobody else has, an eternal planet in the material world. Right. And Krishna's there also with him all the time. So there is a great benefit. And Prabhupada says, better to be poor, because then you depend on Krishna. Now, how do you become poor? Well, if you give everything away to Krishna, just like we're reading uh, the Charastakam, Krishna is stealing everything, right? Uh, but actually, that's not stealing. Uh, that is benefiting you, so you don't become a victim of your own false ego. Everyone is victimized by their own false ego in this world. That's why they're fighting. Pakistan, Pakistan, Hindustan, Hindustan, this stan, that stan. They're all fighting. They're killing each other, right? And why? Because of false identification with the body. Right? So unless we understand these things, the rest of our life we'll be fighting. And we'll be upset. Oh, this person said that. And this person did this. And this temple is not good. And that temple is not good. I'm not going to stay here anymore. I'm going to go away. Ah, uh, all this is based on the false ego. There's no real basis for it. Therefore, it says, Amanitman, Adamitman, Ahimsa. One should be peaceful. One should be satisfied simply with minimum material needs and the maximum giving to Krishna. And that way, we don't have anything to worry about. Just like uh, there was this one family and they were relatively poor, but the husband and wife worked very hard and they got a sewing machine and they would sew things day and night. You know, the father would sew and then he'd go to sleep and then the wife would sew and she'd wake up and, and then he would wake up and he'd, she'd go to sleep and then he would sew. So 24 hours they were working sewing. And over, over a number of years, they'd developed a, a lot of money working like that, day and night, 24 hours, right? And eventually, uh, they were going to buy a nice house. They were living in one little, like a one-room house. They decided to buy a nice house. And, but right when they were picking a house to buy, and pick, they found a really nice one, uh, some thieves came into the neighborhood of that rich, richer neighborhood, and they killed some people and stole everything. They killed a few of these rich people, right? They didn't come to the poor section where they were living because they don't have anything to steal. And they got a chill down their backs. They said, my God, like, look what happened to those people, you know? They had these beautiful houses, and the thieves came there and robbed them and killed them. So they got scared, so they went to see a, a priest. <laughs> and they said, they explained, you know, that they had worked hard day and night 24 hours a day for so many years, and they collected this money. They were thinking of buying a big house, and then this thing happened. It scared them. They, they asked, what should we do? So the priest said, look, you saw what just happened. So if you have uh, such a big house, it could happen to you also. He said, best thing to do, you know, our church is very poor, but that's all right. But there are a lot of poor children, and some of them, just like now, the rich family was killed, but their children were not killed. They're orphans. So there are a lot of orphans in, in, in our uh, area. Why don't you build a nice house for the orphans? And they were thinking, because they didn't have any children, they were just working day and night. They said, but who, who's going to manage the house? I will manage the house, the priest said. I'll make sure that it's used only for their benefit. And you don't have any children, but 
very quickly we could have 30 children in the orphanage. And you'll have 30 kids. You can come and uh, visit them, and they will love you. So they said, let us think about this. So they went home to their little hut, and with that one showing machine, they were thinking about it. And they came back to the priest, and they said, we will do it. And they gave him the money, and he built a very nice uh, orphanage. And there was people were happy the rest of their life because now they had 30 children. And they used their money in a way that had some meaning to it. So being poor is not a bad thing. And earning money is not a bad thing. But using the money only for sense gratification is very bad. But using it to help others, especially in, in Krishna consciousness, that's the best use of money. So we all, all need a minimum to maintain ourselves. But Prabhupada's point is that devotees should live with a minimum so they can give maximum to serving Krishna. That should be our uh, way of living. So Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? All glories to Srila Prabhupada.